Okay, good evening, and uh, welcome to Fairport High School for a special recognition for some of our seniors. As you may know, some of our students are unable to be with us due to very important commitments they've made for themselves and for our country. Before I go too far, I want to thank the members of the Board of Education and our district leadership under the guidance of Superintendent Provenzano um, for all of your support in meeting the needs of our students. I'd also like to thank our building administrative team as well as our guidance counselors, um, teachers, and support staff that are committed to helping our honored guests complete their journeys. The following students have made the decision to follow a path to the military and serve our country in various roles. Please join me in welcoming our FHS 2020 grads that are headed to the military in one shape or another. Um, not sure if everyone's here, I didn't have the opportunity to check them in, but of all the graduates that, that we're aware of, um, Nicholas Collier, um, heading to the Army, uh, Jacob Knapp, U.S. Air Force Academy grad, Joseph Conway, headed to the Air Force, I had to clap just one second, uh, Ryan Prakowski, headed to the Air Force, Cody Ryan to the Navy, Alex Cattell to the Navy, and Griffin Widrick to the Marines. Please round of applause. This is a relatively new ceremony, but I, I, again, given the fact that you'll be missing out on some of the things that we would do at our normal ceremony, I wanted to take a moment to share a few thoughts with you. Um, these are things that I try to share throughout um, your journey in high school, but it's, it's one of those times where I want to slow down and, and share um, some wisdom. Number one, um, I think that this is going to be important to you in the military, but take care of the people that take care of you. You may have heard me say this many times, but it's a simple concept, one that we often take for granted and it's ingrained in our core military values. So I'm sure it's going to be very much impressed upon you throughout your journey over the next um, four plus years. The second piece is, uh, second piece of advice is, you alone decide what type of person you will be. Make a conscious choice to be a good friend, a good student, a good worker, and perhaps someday a good parent. It's the only thing you have control over. Your character is the sum total of the quality of your effort and work, in relationships, and in life. Lastly, I have a special request for you, all of you. Please come home when you can. I'm sure the idea of fleeing Fair Park might be the most appealing idea you've ever heard, or maybe it's the scariest. When you leave, you will gain the perspective that every adult that works and lives in our community has. This is an amazing place to live and raise a family. This realization may take some time, and that's okay. So long as you remember you are a product of Fair Park, Wherever you go, whatever you do, you are part of our family. Thank you for making us all proud to be a Raider. As I think about the paths in front of all of you, I'm confident that you're well prepared. There will most certainly be adversity in your future. Remember that you're not alone. Although we are many Raiders, we are one family, and you have your classmates and all of your collective experiences to draw confidence from you as you find your way. And of course, you have your fair community, and we truly believe that saying, once a Raider, always a Raider. We look forward to hearing you, from you, all of you, and in, um, all of your future success. And at this time, I'm going to ask our graduates to come down into the pit area. Uh, please be careful on the stairs over here. Head that way, down below. And I'm going to drop the screen and hear a few words from some important guests that we've invited here today. We're going to start with Petty Officer Jamie Westfall, representative of the U.S. Navy followed by Colonel Daniel Adams, liaison officer for the Air Force Academy. You guys just want to spread out a little bit, we'll just drop the screen so you can see them.
for uh, Principal Clark for the invitation to speak. Uh, I consider it a great honor to have a moment to recognize the hard work and dedication of those motivated patriotic young Americans that have made a steadfast commitment to serve in our nation and are embarking on a great career within the United States military. Uh, I'd also like to thank the, the teachers and staff of Fairport who have been uh, great in uh, accommodating us military recruiters and uh, allowing us to come in and meet with students and simply have a conversation. Uh, it is by far my, my favorite school to come visit and uh, yeah, my kids go to Victor. Um, <laughs> so uh, a little bit about me and my background because uh, believe it or not I was, I was once in your same exact shoes. Um, yeah, you know, uh, if you'll bear with me for a second. Um, I mentioned I was from Alaska. I was a high school senior in Skagway, Alaska, class of 1999. I was 17 years old, and I wasn't quite sure where my path would lead me uh, post-graduation, and I had certainly had some doubts and reservations about being out on my own and what I was going to do. Uh, then one day, my phone rings, and this, this Navy guy starts talking to me about opportunities and pay and benefits and giving me some options I've never really considered before. Um, CTM1 Kevin Delaney was his name. Uh, he's probably long retired. Uh, but I still remember the conversation and who my recruiter was. It was a, uh, a lasting impact that this one person has had on me throughout my entire career. So, Skagway was cold and desolate and boring. Uh, a town of maybe 700 people total. Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody kind of sometimes thinks that about their hometowns and they want to get out and, and make a change and this what, what got me. My, my graduating class was only nine kids and of those only two were, were girls. Uh, so there wasn't much of a dating pool. And uh, so Kevin Delaney calls me and he says, hey, do you want to get out of a small town, go travel the world and, um, and meet women? And it was exactly at that point that I knew I wanted to join the Navy. And I was sold. Uh, so I said, where do I sign and how do we get the ball rolling? So uh, I had to get consent from my parents to join. And uh, though my grandmother was probably the hardest person I had to convince, uh, after a lot of facts and back, things back and forth, because it was the 1990s, uh, he got me plane tickets and I flew up to Anchorage, Alaska to go finally meet my recruiter and join. Uh, I traveled about 800 miles by plane just to go meet him. Uh, go through entrance processing, pick my job, and then take an oath of enlistment. Uh, and then I waited six months. It was absolutely excruciating. And then on night, September 9th, 1999, I left home. My mom cried, my grandmother cried, pretty much everybody cried. Uh, late that night, I arrived at basic, Navy basic training in Great Lakes, Illinois, and my journey truly began. Uh, so for the parents out there, believe me, sending your children off can be hard and emotional, but I assure you that they will come back changed for the better. Young men and young women of sheer fortitude and determination, able to take on any challenge and excel. They will be full of pride and resourcefulness, and you will be more, even more impressed at what you have created and raised than even you are right now. So after all my training was complete and I headed home to Alaska on leave, my grandmother, the one that cried and was so hesitant about me joining, was the first to tell me, go put your dress uniform on, we're going to church, everybody will be there. Uh, she had to show me off to all of her friends. So it's usually those who are most hesitant who end up being the most proud. You'll find, uh, for, the, for the folks that are joining, or have joined I should say, you will find that you will work alongside members of every branch. I spent five years on a Marine Corps Air Station in Beaufort, South Carolina. I trained with the Army in Fort Lewis, Washington. I worked on airfields and loaded cargo planes with Air Force folks in Spain and Japan. I have shed blood, sweat, and tears with many folks from all over the United States and all over the world. Uh, the one thing that truly makes us stand out, makes us great, is that you will forever share a bond with these folks, your new brothers and sisters, comrades in arms, wherever your careers may take you. I've now been in a little over 20 years. I've traveled the world. I've seen a ton of cool places, met a lot of great friends that I am proud to call my shipmates. And I've had experiences that I could never have dreamed of. 
I even finally met that great woman along the way, got married, and had a couple of kids. Uh, believe me when I say that when my girls get to the point in their lives where they're in your shoes and they're trying to decide which path to take, I hope that maybe you will be at their graduation and one of y'all will be giving a speech about their commitment and your experiences in the military. So be proud of what you have accomplished. Be proud of the service you have joined. Look forward to the future with that same perseverance and commitment that has brought you thus far. And take advantage of every opportunity that the military will provide to you and your families. Many may not realize that the last military draft was December 7, 1972. Since then, we have become an all-volunteer force. And it has been folks like us, me and you, that have served. Young patriots that have answered our country's call. But as I near retirement, it will soon fall upon you all to carry our Star Spangled Banner forward into the night. To hold up Liberty's torch in the American way. So I'd like to share some of President Kennedy's words. Uh, he spoke these to the Naval Academy graduates in 1961, so please keep in mind that JFK was a sailor. Uh, but I think that it resounds the same no matter which uniform you wear. And I'll do my best impression here. Uh, but I don't have a boss, I'm not from Boston, so uh, I can imagine no more rewarding a career and any man who may be asked in this century what he did to make his life worthwhile, I think can respond with a good deal of pride and satisfaction. I serve in the United States Navy. So I congratulate you all. This is a hard job, particularly now if you make the change. But I think it develops in you those qualities which we like to see in our country, which we take pride in. Hope I didn't butcher that too much. Um, so now, um, again, I'd like to take a moment just to recognize our 2020 graduating seniors that have joined. No matter the reasons behind it, be it college, training, pride and honor, uh, or to simply travel the world and meet girls as I did. Um, Nicholas Collier, U.S. Army. Griffin Widrick, United States Marine Corps. Joseph Conaway, Jacob Knapp, and Ryan Burkowski, United States Air Force, and Cody Ryan and Alex Cattell, the homies, uh, United States Navy. Congratulations, seniors. Hold your head up high and remember that you are entering a world where you are now the 1%. Of all Americans alive, only 1% have served or are currently serving. Good luck, God bless, and thanks for letting a salty old sailor ramble on for a few moments. Thank you. States Air Force retired Dan Adams. I'm a volunteer Air Force Academy liaison officer here in the Rochester area. It's my pleasure today to represent the United States Air Force and my privilege to recognize Jacob Knapp's admittance to the United States Air Force Academy Preparatory School in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, before I uh, continue, again, I, I'd like to congratulate all of the uh, Airport High School graduates who are heading off into the military. And, and also, I want to thank uh, Mr. Clark uh, for the opportunity to uh, present this, uh, this admittance to, uh, to Jacob. This uh, admittance is the equivalent of a one-year full-ride scholarship to a top-tier college preparatory school. Next year, Jacob will study math, English, science, and military history while participating in strenuous military training and athletic programs. Upon successful completion of the preparatory school, he will have an opportunity to be appointed to the United States Air Force Academy the following year, my alma mater. If appointed to the Academy, he will earn a Bachelor of Science degree in his choice of 28 different academic majors, ranging from aeronautical engineering, astronautics, uh, physics, or humanities. And he will be commissioned as a second lieutenant in either the United States Air Force or the new United States Space Force after completing that four-year academy program. 
So without further ado, on behalf of the Air Force Academy and the Director of Admissions, I'm pleased to offer Jacob Knapp admittance into the United States Air Force Academy Preparatory School Class of 2021. Congratulations, Jacob. So I just want to thank um, our guests for, for being here this evening to speak. And um, just a minute, I'm going to slide the screen back up and invite our superintendent of schools, Mr. Brett Forman, out to the stage uh, to confer diplomas. Um, Mr. Forsman, if you want to join him as well. And then our graduates, while we're putting the screen up, um, could you please pick up your diploma? They're labeled here right on the front table. So go ahead and pick up your diploma and head on up. Thank you so much for being here. 